making an approach to someone you have previously worked with or who comes recommended through that person that you worked with can be very beneficial for you to understand what's happening in a specific sector, industry or city that you want to work in. And because that person has your trust and understands you, it makes it much more interesting than just Googling things online. Hi, I'm Renata Bernardi, and this is the Job Hunting Podcast, where I interview experts and professionals and discuss issues that are important for job hunters and those who are working to advance their careers. So make sure that you subscribe and follow, and let's dive right in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Job Hunting Podcast. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe wherever you found us. I think you're going to find that this resource, the Job Hunting Podcast, might be very useful to your future career plans and job searching strategies. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the easiest way to network. And this is something I have done myself many times and I often recommend to my clients. So I hope that you stick around to know what I'm talking about. But just in case you are new, don't forget to also subscribe to my newsletter. I have a newsletter that goes out every week on a Tuesday morning, Melbourne time. And it has the new episode of the Job Hunting Podcast. It also has articles that I think are of benefit to professionals who are looking for work or just thinking about doing better plans for their careers. So I'd love for you to sign up for my newsletter. I'm going to leave the link to sign up to the newsletter down below in the episode show notes. So have a look at that and also have a look at my website and see the career services that I provide. Maybe there's something there for you. By the time you listen to this episode, I will have closed Job Hunting Made Simple, which is my online course and group coaching program. But you can go to my website and uh, register your interest to attend it next time I run it. I do it twice a year. So something to keep in mind if you want to be working with me and alongside other interesting professionals like you looking for work as a team, as a group. It's so interesting and so high energy as opposed to the loneliest, the, the lonely pursuit of job hunting that most of us have experienced. So I would strongly recommend. Now, what is the easiest way to network? I'm going to give you seven reasons why you should keep in contact with your former colleagues. And let's talk about what that really means. Because we all know that networking is a vital component of career development. We know that, right? Whatever your current career challenges are, whether it's seeking advice on a new job opportunity or you need an introduction to someone in a specific organization where you plan to apply for a job, or simply you're building relationships with people that you value, networking and connecting with someone you trust can have a very positive effect on your career progression. However, many of us struggle to know how to connect, who to connect with, and how to access that network to support your career dreams and aspirations. I have found that the alumni network provides a rich source of contacts, support, and mentorship that can really help you navigate these career changes that come up every now and then. If you have gone to a high school, a college, a university, or you've had a job in the past, chances are you are part of an alumni. Alumni stands for a graduate, a group of graduates or former students of a school, college, or a university. It's a plural noun. So if you're an individual, you're an, al an alum, and if it's a group, it's an alumni. So for example, I am part of the Melbourne University alumni and the Monash University alumni. I'm a member of those two groups. Sometimes they are formal groups like university ones. You have to sign up online. You are an alumni if you graduated from it, but it's always good to keep your contact details up to date 
and subscribe to the alumni newsletter and so on. And usually most colleges, universities and even high schools will have some sort of formal way of doing that online. So please go on and have a look. And also you can be a member of company alumni. That is the alumni term has also been used more and more now for company former employees. Some organizations like Ernst Young or EY, PwC, McKinsey, Hilda Packer, they're working really hard on building alumni networks that help them stay connected with their former employees and also help employees stay connected with each other. These companies really rely on their alumni network to build strong partnerships, collaborations, prospecting clients. It's really beneficial for them. So for example, if you have worked at a management consulting firm like McKinsey and you're now working at you know, a, a corporate organization, chances are if you need a consultant, you will go back to McKinsey, to your former colleagues and ask them to support you with a specific project. So that alumni network, if it's nurtured well, can really benefit a company, but it has wonderful benefits for the individuals as well. Are you part of an alumni network? Well, I'm sure you are. Maybe you haven't really paid attention to it much, but with a bit of digging and research online, I'm sure you can find out these organizations. I wouldn't skip joining those LinkedIn groups and signing up to those email newsletters that alumni networks usually have. They are a gold mine of information for you. And so if you're in the lookout for job opportunities, you're considering your next career move, you just want to keep a pulse on what's happening on the job market, contacting your alumni can be a great place to start. Alumni associations also offer a considerable amount of career resources. I have, in fact, worked with some alumni associations in high schools and universities to support their alumni with career resources, offering specific discounts for them or access to masterclasses and free resources and paid resources. So have a look online. I'm sure that you will find that you are a member of an alumni that offer those opportunities. So things like job search databases are very common for alumni websites career advice, networking functions and events, and also mentorship opportunities. So both for you to become a mentor or to be mentored by somebody. I have been a mentor for Melbourne University for a few years and it was a lovely experience for me. I'm still in touch with those mentees. They're lovely people. So what are the benefits that you can expect to find from being connected with alumni networks? I have come up with seven different benefits. I'm sure there could be more. I'd love to hear from you if you have had great results by being in touch with your alumni. So number one for me is business intelligence, just gathering knowledge and understanding of job markets through connecting with an alumni network, attending events and talking to people with no expectations. You're not seeking a job. You're not trying too hard. You're just there to gather knowledge and understanding. It's a great starting point when you're considering making your next career move to be involved with your alumni, making an approach to someone you have previously worked with or who comes recommended through that person that you worked with can be very beneficial for you to understand what's happening in a specific sector, industry or city that you want to work in. And because that person has your trust and understands you, it makes it much more interesting than just Googling things online. You know, it's much more tailored to you 
and I would strongly recommend. I have done this many times in my career. I remember flying to Sydney and catching up with former colleagues there, connecting with them, getting ideas, telling them what my plans were for the future and hearing what they had to say. Also here in Melbourne, of course, but you know, even taking that extra step of going interstate to meet with people that I really valued. I valued their opinions and their understanding of the job market. That has always been very helpful to me. And those were not formal alumni. They were just people that worked with me in the past and I kept in touch with. The second thing is referrals. So your former colleagues, your former bosses, and also people that you studied with in university can be a great source of referrals for job openings. Referrals are very big in large organizations, even in small organizations as well, of course. And these people may be aware of job opportunities that are not even advertised yet. And they may be a good fit for you and your skills and experience. So if you're top of mind with those people, they will think of you and they will refer you for those opportunities. Many times there is a financial benefit for them to refer great people for roles. So if you get the job, for example, they could make some money out of it as an incentive for bringing great candidates and attracting good talent to the organization. So keep in touch with them because this could really benefit you. In fact, you may have seen that in some online applications, there is sometimes a question, have you been referred to this opportunity by someone that works in this organization? And then you have to type in their name. So this is what it means. And sometimes it's more formal. Sometimes it's informal. The third benefit I can think of is you can ask them to be your referees for a job you're applying or just to be a referee in case you, you know, decide to look for work in a more sort of generic way. I have always been in touch with previous bosses or colleagues of mine and, you know, have ask them to be my referees from time to time, sometimes for specific job applications, but sometimes just in general, you know, I would say something along the lines of, do you mind if I put you down as a referee for future job opportunities? I will keep you in the loop. I will keep you up to date. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure that that's okay with you. And once you make that request, I think it's expected of you to nurture that relationship and keep in touch with that person above and beyond your needs for a referee for a future job. I think it's good to keep in touch because that person is doing you a huge favor and you want to nurture that relationship, not to be just transactional. The fourth benefit is, of course, collaboration, you know, building strong relationships with colleagues, former colleagues and former college or university students that you've had in the past can make it much easier to work on projects. When you are working for one organization, they are working with a partner organization. It just leads to better results if you know that person and you can quickly get in touch with them and initiate the the collaboration, the project, the partnership. It's really important and beneficial, not just for your career, but for your current employer. So those collaborations are really important. Again, in my career, I have done this several times, building collaborations with people that I had worked with in the past, getting in touch with them to find the best way around bureaucracies or bottlenecks. And that was also really beneficial. Number five in the benefits of keeping in touch with your alumni is learning opportunities. Your colleagues, former colleagues, can also provide valuable learning opportunities and share experience and knowledge with you that you are not currently aware of. Because sometimes we're so focused on our own job, our own life, we kind of miss out on trends and skills and things that are happening in the industry that are just not in our focus. It's not something we're paying attention to. So keep in mind that those conversations that are not 
transactional. You're not talking to somebody because you need a job. You know, <laughs> that's the least of the reasons why you should connect with a network. You should connect with your network for opportunities like this, you know, just organic, um, holistic opportunities that just makes you a better professional. And you can learn a lot from talking to other professionals like you. Number six is you could rejoin the organization at a later stage of your career. So this is specific for company alumni, like I mentioned before. Many companies are now giving considerable attention to their alumni networks. And I recently read that Ernst Young has around 15% of their new hires coming from their alumni community. Now, I'm not really clear if that means that they are rehiring people that had worked with them before, or if they are hiring people that have been recommended from their alumni community. But either way, it shows how important it is for them to keep in touch with their alumni. I'll add the link to that article down below in the episode show notes if you want to have a look. I'm also adding to the episode show notes another article, it's a short one, listing the most powerful company alumni so that you can have a look and see if you belong to any of them. Then you have number seven as the final benefit that I could think of is the mentorship. You know, colleagues who are more experienced than you can become great mentors, provide guidance for you as you advance in your career. They will give you advice to help you navigate problems that you're having at work. I have always found this incredibly useful to me and I have always sought the help of mentors, that people that have worked with me before, to navigate some big issues or small issues that I had at work and they were always incredibly supportive. People love giving advice and I think that uh, I do. <laughs> I think that if you can tap in that really interesting, supportive part of people's careers and professions, you know, if they are a few years ahead of you or sometimes they are exactly at the same stage that you are but they have experienced something that you have not experienced yet and you can definitely count on them to support you and share with you their experiences and their recommendations and advice for you to navigate your career with fewer bumps along the way. Okay, so now that we've identified several benefits and how easy it is to network with people that you know or that you have something in common with, for example, you've worked in the same organization or you went to the same university, where do you find them? Well, let's look at places where you can find them, okay? First of all, there is LinkedIn, right? So the search engine on LinkedIn is fantastic. You can put the name of the organization or university there and find a whole bunch of people that worked in that organization and they, you can search by city. So for example, I have recently worked with a client who was leaving an organization and wanted to take the next step. So what I suggested to him was why don't you find people that had worked in your organization that are also based in your town? Let's say they're based in Melbourne. So let's say the organization is Hewlett Packard. You would go and you would um, type in Hewlett Packard on the LinkedIn search and then look for people that are in Melbourne and that have Hewlett Packard as their past company, not their current company. And you can use all those different filters on LinkedIn to find people. Alternatively, you can go to the Hewlett Packard LinkedIn page or your university LinkedIn page, and you can look at people that are currently working there or people that have worked there before. With the university pages, it's even better because you can search alumni by location. It's so easy and you can find all of the people that are currently based in Melbourne that have a LinkedIn profile of course and that has gone to the same university as you have. It could be a university in the UK, it could be a university in Canada and you know you would find the individuals that are based in Melbourne and you would then 
seek to connect with them. The other way of engaging alumni through LinkedIn is by being involved in that university's LinkedIn groups. You know, they have alumni groups, and I believe that some organizations also have alumni groups on LinkedIn. So in my case, I am a member of the Monash University alumni group on LinkedIn, also the Monash Business School alumni group and the, you know, the different faculties have alumni groups and the university at large has alumni groups on LinkedIn. So have a look at those and sign up to become a member. You have to ask to join. I've recently just joined another specific alumni group from the University of Melbourne because they gave me a fellowship and they have a group just for the University Enterprise Fellows, which I'm a member of now. So have a look at signing up for specific groups as well as the larger groups. Okay, the other way to find your alumni is checking the organization's website. So universities and other organizations like EY, you go to their website and you check out their alumni groups and you sign up for those as well. Make sure that they have your contact details and you can check out the alumni events. There are usually dinners, reunions, sporting events you can attend. And these are true for high schools, colleges, universities, and like I said, companies as well. So an organization like UI, for example, has over 1 million members in their alumni network all over the world. And many of them say that they're very happy for other alumni to reach out to them for advice. And I can say that that's true also for universities and, and high schools and colleges as well. Melbourne University, for example, has alumni associations not only here in Melbourne, but running events in the UK and many other countries in Southeast Asia, in the US and other Australian cities like Sydney, for example. So don't think that because you moved countries that you may not be involved with your university alumni. I'm pretty sure that many universities now have international diasporas and they cater for those as well. And those alumni usually have newsletters and they share discounts and events and invitations for both alumni events and other events that are promoted through their alumni community. So have a look at those and be in touch. I think it's important for you to identify a couple of interesting groups that you click with, that you gel well with, and then participate in those groups events in an ongoing way. Just attending it once may not really result in anything big for you. <laughs> but if you attend that events in that group for a couple of years and you invest time and energy in developing and nurturing relationships within that group, that's when I think networking really clicks and start to provide professional and personal benefits to your life. I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about this very simple way to network and connect. And I hope that you keep connected with me as well. And I will talk to you at the next episode. Bye for now.